All right. Good morning, Keith. How you doing this morning, man? I'm trying to get settled in here. I figured uh, so many toys I put out. I figured I want to get down here on the couch and get in the floor. I have enough room for everything. I still feel like I'm missing something out of the bunch. I'm pro I'm pretty sure I am. I just cannot for the life of me. You know how it is when you 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 know you know something, but then when you uh get ready to do it, you're like get a total mind block and everything and stuff. But I think I got a pretty decent selection going here to kind of kind of give you overall what was going on in the 80s and stuff like that. And the and the 80s was, I think, from 82 and up was probably, I think, 82 to 86 was probably the best four years. If you was a sci-fi fantasy uh, action toy uh, genre, I think that was probably the best four years we've ever had in the history of action figures. Because you had, a, you know, Star Wars came in with the last movie, what was it, 84, 85? Uh, you know, GI, uh, not GI Joe, but uh, He Man hit the scenes in 82, 81. Uh, you can really bring it in five years. 81 was the Clash of the Titans here. So you just have between those three products, I, I'm really shocked that the Clash of the Titans it really didn't do better than what they did. I think the, the, the lower budget feel of the movie is probably what hurt the product line because you take what, uh, Lucas did in 78 with Star Wars. It is a much better polished movie versus in 1981, three years later, The Clash of the Titans. So, and I think that's, I think a lot of people kind of got taken off of that movie. And me, I, I, I love those style movies, but I'm a huge Jason of the Argonauts, uh, Sinbad the Sailor, all those kind of products. Really love that kind of stuff. Uh, Michael, good morning. Glad you're here with me this morning. See here. Trying to guys got horrible eyes, so I'm gonna try to read across the room here, see what everybody's saying. Yep, my pet monsters. That's something I did not have, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I did not have any of those. I was like I said, there I was a hardcore action figure fan. So anything I only have a few plush items. Uh the only plush item I think of that I have right now is the powers of the force, the 12 inch scale wampa that came with the luke skywalker and I, and, uh, and i actually have one box still and i got another one that my little girl the first action figure that i've ever had either we was at a toy show at knoxville and there was this huge pile of toys i think anything in there was five bucks or something like that and so at one years old she was this big enough to walk uh, i said all right you can pick anything here and she dug in the little box and she picked out the big 12 inch scale wampa so i, I was extremely Extremely proud dad that moment. That out of all those different kinds of toys, you know, they was Care Bears in there and all other sorts of plush stuff, but she picks the Wampa. So I love that. That's, a, that's my girl right there. See, uh, see, Sand and Sandal movie. Uh, I have no clue what you're talking about on that one. Uh, or, or are you just referring to Sand and Sandal to like the Clash and the Titans kind of stuff? So I, I if that's what you mean, I, I just got that. So, yeah. The Kraken, yeah, this is like back in 1980 uh, or 81 leading up to Christmas. Uh, this I had the Sears catalog, you know, if you was a kid, if you're about my age, that was the big deal about late summer, early fall. You got the Sears catalog and you, that was your wish list. You took the red uh, pen or and, and it started circling everything you wanted. And this bad boy, and actually the Pegasus was also on my list, but I got the Pegasus. And the Perseus and a, a couple other the figures, I, I think it was the Calibus and the Boat Keeper. I got all those, but I did. My mom did not. Mom and dad did not get me this. And I've, and like I said, and I've only touched one or two over the last 30 years since. And then, like I said, everybody, uh, if you didn't get to watch it, if you go back on some of my videos, on, it was one of my first few live streams. I think it's my second one, I believe, second or third one. I show where I went to East Ridge and another guy named Kevin uh, who does toys and stuff. Uh, sold me this, and I got uh, three other figures for an amazing deal. I'll never find another one like this at this price ever again. So, so that was a. This has been a holy grail year for the toy smuggler. I mean, it's just like I kind of hit a dead spot there for years, and this year has been a lot of holy grails this year. Let's see here. Say, 
Oh, Slimer and Stay Puff from the Real Ghost. But actually, uh, I'm glad you mentioned those. Excellent thinking. I didn't even think of those as monsters. But I actually, luckily, my little girl stash is right here. And I was going to add this guy to the mix. But technically, he is late 70s if we got over technical about it. We'll see that Slimer's in here somewhere, but I'll go ahead and use this right here. I knew he would be easy. The Slimer actually have him. Slimer ain't about that big, but, but I got the Stay Puff guy. And like I said, I forgot all about him as a kid. But at the same time, uh, I wasn't into Ghostbusters toys because the reason I didn't like them back in, back in the day, I have a huge respect for them now that I didn't have. Back in the day, I was more about what I seen on the movie. And a lot of the stuff on the real Ghostbusters uh, toy line was more based on the cartoon that I was not a fan of. So... So that's the Stay Puff. Like I said, I got this. My little girl is obsessed with real Ghostbusters action figures. So I, I'm actually excited that they're going to re-break the, some of those. So I'm going to definitely get a set to hang up on the wall. Even though the quality probably isn't going to be as great, but they'll still look great in the package. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. What did you do? Oh, what did you do, Ray? <laughs> The 24-inch Stay Puff is amazing. Yes, I agree. I would, that, that'd be something to be great to have on the top shelf. Definitely for sure. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm trying to read, guys. Like I said, my eyes are horrible. Let's see. Keith's Big Stay Puff is awesome. Let's see here. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope. That, I hope they're the. They. I hope they release enough of these. The only thing I'm kind of noticing the the trend is when they release these uh, old retro style figures, they do such small numbers and they're just so scattered out. And then I couldn't tell you how many times I've had to pass up the Star Wars retro stuff because of, of what few were there was the ones I wanted, but the package was already just they like they've been manhandled. So it's like crap so i'm not gonna get something that's all messed up so it, it and that's why i hate these new uh hasbro cards they're so thin they, they they just don't survive uh some teenager at walmart pulling them out of the package and messing them up before they can get them to hang up on the peg so let's see here well oh the next to the panther i hope you're talking about this black one here this is one that i put together uh, I, I done my own version of Savage He Man. Like I said, you know, you all know I do the restorations and I do customs and stuff. And all this is is a Panther. Uh, and all these three cats come from the original uh, Big Jim line in the 70s. And if you take a Panther, find one that the flock is already almost off of it. You can uh, strip it off with either alcohol, uh, fingernail polish remover. Do not use the one. Uh, use the one that has does not have the acetate. Uh, light, light. Let it soak in lighter fluid is probably the safest. Is even better than the. I don't recommend the nail polish remover because it's a little bit harsh. It kind of takes the luster off the black. But if you do that, then what you'll end up having left over, and it even still has the date stamped. Uh, for the Big Jim, I think it's 1976 or 79 or something like that. But it, it's the Big Jim, Tarzan, and Panther. So so just to kind of give you guys, so if you ever want to get back and go back to the Big Jim line and start collecting, do not overpay for the Black Panther unless the Black Panther is still in the package with the Tarzan on card. Because I'm here to tell you, people are out there bootlegging a panther pulling the flock off and selling it for a high dollar because it's the big gym version. Do not get full. Don't pay no more. If someone's selling a black tiger, I wouldn't pay no more than 20 bucks. And that's just because they went to the ever take the flock off for you. I would not pay over it. 15 to 20 is high enough. Anything over 20 is uh, just find you a pan. You can find panthers all day long. That's got horrible flock for five bucks. Just go to the flea market Go to these little toy shows. You can find it. But that's what I did. This is my painted 
I'll get a little bit closer here. Sorry, guys. I get to talking. I'm not paying attention. And I've done some oil painting shadows. This is for, like I said, for my Savage He-Man. So while we're on the cats, I'll just go ahead and do a run through. And here's the Panther. I'm not big on touching the flock. This is one of the, my better Panthors that I have. And they're, for whatever reason, and I don't know what the deal of it is, guys. Maybe you all have an answer for it. But for some reason, the Panthors have jumped up to be slightly higher value than the uh, Battle Cats. Which, you know, you know, at least the Battle Cat comes with the different heads thing. And I hope it'd be kind of cool. Mine is horribly dusty. I noticed that when I got in here. Uh. I hope when they reissue these out that the uh, I'm, I'm very excited about seeing what the cats are going to look like. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm sure they're going to have articulation or their, the limbs are going to move. I just hope they keep the articulation simple enough to where it the, the all the articulation don't make the sculpt look bad. If you know if you know you guys know what I'm saying, and also from the uh, Motu line. Uh, these really wasn't considered beasts, but these also are from the Big Gym. You got the Zoar and Screech, and I really love these guys. And you can pick these guys up for under ten dollars all day long if you look hard enough. Now, Big Gym also has two versions. I think there's a black version and a brown version. And unfortunately, though those uh, two birds go from anywhere between uh, thirty to fifty dollars, and it's this. I've only seen one, and I think the guy quoted me, I think forty-five bucks for one of the brown ones, and I just couldn't do it. I just didn't see. I know it's different and it goes long, but I just think forty-five bucks was just way too much for this deal. It just, I just, I just couldn't do it. Like I said, the guys. Uh, when you when I've been in this business so long and I know how much stuff costs and it just for these people to be scalping toys trying to oh it's vintage and this, they think it's made out of gold it just I don't know it just it's a true bummer they th those are the type of people that really take the fun out of toy collecting and I just wish people would stop and remember hey they're just toys <laughs> get over it. And kind of talking about the uh, bootleg agenda back in those. Everybody's you know, always on the big topic of bootlegs and repros nowadays. Well, like I've done in videos in the past, it's been going on since the dawn of time with toys and action figures, guys. The, and only the, the difference between now and back then, there was not a platform for everyone to voice their opinion, so to speak. See, so. See, would you consider the Dubok and Tauntaun beast or just creatures? I, well, to me, beast and creatures are, are pretty much, I would say, pretty much close to the same thing. Uh, a, a beast is this anything that is like a non-humanoid and a, a creature can, I think those two have crossing lines, I guess, so to speak. I think they do vary a little bit different, but I think they overlap more than what they are different and stuff. Now, the big difference is uh, if you take like a Chewbacca and compare him to the Wampa, obviously Chewbacca is a character. He has a language. He can speak. He interacts with other humanoids versus the Wampa was more monster creature-ish and more savage, so to speak. I think to be considered a non-beast or monster, you have to have an intelligence about your about the character. So, but what I was saying about the uh, platforms and you know back in the day, you know, if you wanted to voice your opinion positively or negative, you had to write a letter to the editor of a comic book or whatever. So, not, and, and maybe someone got to see it if they decided to put it back in their magazine. But nowadays. We, with the YouTube and Facebook, everybody has an opinion. Everybody wants to get their opinion and shove it down everybody's throat. And it seems like instead of being uh, the sad part of all that, which I think that is great that we have this platforms that we, where we can communicate with each other. But unfortunately, I think a lot of people take advantage of it and want to shove so much negativity out there. And, I, and I'm really against that. I think 
people. This is a great platform for all of us to, A, to get along, share cool things like this, and quit being so neat. If you don't like something, change the channel. Keep your opinion to yourself and just move on. There's a lot of things. When I'm, I'm always, uh, two or three times a week, I get on here and I start scrolling for new things to what I'm hoping to find somebody new. And, and, and a lot of times I find a lot of kind of junk that I just don't care about. And guess what? I just keep on scrolling. I don't put them down or say something negative. It's what's the old saying my dad used to tell me. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Perfect advice to live by. So, and this guy right here is very cool. I actually, this is one of the things I picked up and I had plans on uh, reselling this, uh, making a small little profit on it. Nothing, nothing major. I got a great deal on it and I was actually going to sell it for $10 less than what it was uh, going on. And right before I posted it, the resale, I just decided to keep, I, the more and more I looked at it on my shelf, guys, I just love this thing. And and I'm not mistaken, this come from the Galaxy Warriors. They were pretty much a, a bootleg version of the He-Man stuff that was going on back in the 80s. And I don't know if you guys got to watch it where I turned a Triclops into a War Duke. So I made a Motu style War Duke. This is what my War Duke sits on. So instead of a horse, he and he looks amazing on top of this thing. So he's going to just stay in my edition forever. I'm not going to get rid of him. I, the, the War Duke looks so amazing on. The only thing that I might do is dirty up this side a little bit to help bring out the amazing. And the guys, the sculpt on this thing, I'm going to try to get the camera in here. The sculpt on this thing is freaking amazing. Just totally amazing. I mean, the they put more detail on this than what they did on the Battle Cat and Panther ever thought about having. I mean, the quality of this figure versus Battle Cat and Panther, this guy rivals it 10 to 6, bottom line. That's how well it, this was made. And it was a shame that, that it come from a bootleg company, not the real thing. And see, I think uh, when this came out, uh, Mattel should have seen this and went, started going more in this direction. And instead of doing all the silliness stuff that they did with the Shira and crap like that. Yeah, I think it's very nice scope. See, and the dragon was greener. See here. See, yeah, they made like uh, three or four different versions of this, slightly different colors, different color saddles. And like I said, but this is the only one in the wild I've ever, and when I came across it, I snatched it up as fast as I could because I just don't see them that often. So that's why, uh, that's another reason why I don't want to let, let it go is it, I, I love rare toys. I really do. That's kind of like my thing. I'd, I'd rather be on the hunt for something old and rare than the new crap that's coming out. So, all right, now we're going to hit some Star Wars here this morning. And for all you guys, uh, I still got it planned for today, two o'clock, meet the family. I'm trying to get a hold of Santiago's being a turd. I'm trying to get a hold of this morning. But I'm trying to get he he's going. To, I'm trying to get him to go uh, uh, do FaceTime on my wife's phone so we can put the phone up and then he get to tell some stories to you guys. So you get to beat my wife, my little girl. Hope they all have Santiago and maybe a couple other different people from my Paranormal Chaser series since George, uh, since Dalton went on their lockdown starting I think uh, ten o'clock last night and uh, my wife then told me the the crazy news about how. Walmart here is only letting so many people in the store at a time, so we have to wait in line just to get into the damn store. Ah. Very annoying. So I wish I would have went to the store yesterday. So, but back to Star Wars. Let's let's enjoy the day. So right here I have the uh, classic Tauntaun, one of my favorite toys as a kid. Just I I love the art design. Uh, this is a Ralph McQuarrie design. Just amazing. That guy is just one of the greatest artists of all time and really just don't get the respect that I think he should have. Uh, just uh, this, this, like I said, this, I talked about it last night. I wish they would have done something like a summer version of a Tauntaun for the characters to ride in the last movie, but they went for the stupid horse gimmick, which was just cheap, cheap. And there's, it's just cheap. <laughs> so, but just a great classic design here. Uh, he kind of acts as a vehicle and a beast creature all rolled in one. This right here, when you put a human figure on it, just reeks sci-fi all the way. And it just 
really opens up a child's imagination and play right here. This is this is a great embodiment of sci-fi childhood playing right here. And I just truly love it. Great design, great, great toy etic. I mean, it's just great to look at and great to play with. We'll see what everybody's saying here. I'm trying to keep up all the comments, guys. See here. Uh, always wanted the open. Actually, I have one the open belly. I, I just don't have a saddle for it and stuff. But they are very, unfortunately, when you do come across one of those, the, the open belly part sometimes is a slightly warped and junk like that. So that's the only uh, bad thing about those so far. So they're hard, but you can put those in like boiling water and sometimes they will straighten themselves out a little bit. So, so if you have one in the, in the open belly part kind of warped, uh, boil some water, add some baby oil to the boiling water. Then take, when it gets to boiling real good, take it off the stove. eye, set the, uh, tauntaun in there and let that boiling, uh, baby oil water soak into that uh, rubber and everything and it probably will straighten it right out. It'll definitely make it do better. See here. See here. I waited in line yesterday at 730 and it felt weird. <laughs> I could I could definitely I could imagine. Probably feels like you're in Russia or something like that. See uh Ralph McQuarrie and John Williams are true heroes of Star Wars. Yes. Bottom line Star Wars without John Williams music would just not emotionally feel right and without Ralph McQuarrie it wouldn't visually look right so like I said those two guys their artistic talents that they brought to the board was the true hardcore concrete foundation of Star Wars success so then you take someone like Lucas who was a visionary and you take those elements bottom line guys if you want to do something great and something big surround yourself with other great people. And that's one of the things that really hurts a lot of, even though we're connected by the internet and stuff, unfortunately, a lot of people don't use this as a tool to get in touch with other talented people and to do bigger things. Everybody's always jealous or afraid of somebody else. And don't be that way. If you're an artist, reach out to other artists and try to do bigger things together. That's like what me and Tim Smith are doing with the star man and stuff like that. I love Tim Smith's art. I support him. So the first person I thought of to do the pencil work was not me. I wanted him to do his pencil work and me take my painting talents and throw on top of it. And so far, it's a great, it's a winning mixture so, so far. So guys, don't shelter yourself and keep away. Meet people, blend, get to get to know other people. And that's, you'll grow quicker as an artist the more you're around other great artists. See here, guys. See you. See here, uh, see here, I'm trying to see here. Uh, if I get one, I'll try that. I only have the solid belly. Yeah, like I said, try try the boiling thing. If you get one, it'd be it should work on you. Ego gets in the way, true, true, true. Uh, people's either their ego gets in the way because they're afraid of competition or they're just afraid of other people in general and afraid to get in front of the camera. Either one of them's not good. And, and sometimes it, some people is, is a mixture of both. So, and like I said, luckily my 21 years in professional wrestling really prepared me to get in front because, because see, when I got in the camera back in those days, we was doing live TV tapings, kind of like this right here. There was no, if you screwed up or if you messed up on the interview, you just look like an idiot. And so, 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 so 21 years of doing, and doing the radio commercials and stuff. Anytime we was going to a new town, we would have these radio spots. We'd, uh, the show would start at 7 o'clock at night. We'd go to the radio station about 12 o'clock, uh, from 12 to 2, and do like a two-hour two radio thing. We'll be on there with the, the broadcaster, and we'll be talking about pro wrestling and what's going on that night and stuff. And sometimes we'd have a heated argument over the radio and stuff, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. Even though you couldn't see us, it was a lot of fun, and I got to do quite a bit of a television thing the same way we did the radio but we did it on tv up here in chattanooga at uc tv3 that was fun so we got do these uh four or five hour early promos and stuff like that really set up some heat and really brought people out to the stadiums it's just so much fun and so like i said it's great preparation for youtube today and that's why i feel i can sit here for two hours and just run my mouth unfortunately so i mean and it's, but it's just a lot of fun. I love connecting with everybody and to see 
a whole list of people talking this morning. Thank you guys, man. I love it. It just really excites me to keep rolling. And I really look forward to you guys to joining me this afternoon. And so I'm hoping that that's going to be a great little deal. And it's in the guys, the biggest thing is it's my 100th episode here on YouTube. So, so to me, it's a, one of my first big milestones. And the next one I'm shooting for is that 1000 subscribers. So that's my, that's my big, next big target. So, all right. Let's say no more on that. All right. Let's go here to the uh, Wampa. Let's see, make sure the light's not going to be. Too, there we go. He's focusing in quite nice. There we go. And I really, uh, the only thing I don't like about this Wampa is I think they could have slightly done a little bit better on the design of the legs. And I would love to find one with a messed up leg. So I would have excuse to rip the legs off one and sculpt some new legs. So if anybody out there, if you guys have one of these that has like where a dog's chewed on it, please send it my way and I will do a new leg sculpt for this thing because I will really have to say that this is still one of the better sculpts for the Wampa, even though there's been a lot more sculpts, even the six inch scale looks pretty good, but I think all the crazy articulation uh, just does not help it. And I would love to see one just, I would love to re totally redesign this, but I love, I love how they did the arms. I love how they laid the, the, the fur down on this creature. So still the guy who made it done an excellent job. And, uh, and plus two back in those days, you had somebody higher up saying, all right, here's the block of wood that this character has to fit in. And you have to make this creature fit in this space. And so a lot of times the, the sculptors was restrained before they even picked up the first uh, tool to start carving. So, so I always remember that guys. That's what was a lot of the reason why a lot of these toys back in the day, was very simple or maybe not been in the true scales because someone higher up says, all right, he has to fit in this many square inches in this dimension. He can't be no bigger because of the packaging issues back in the days or limited shelf space, which if you look some of the old pictures, Star Wars didn't have issues with limited space. They had whole entire aisles where uh, the other day when I went to Walmart, I mean, the Star Wars section honestly is like, three foot wide and empty is extremely pathetic extremely pathetic all right moving on here guys i hope everyone's enjoying this this morning Let's see where we're at here oh okay how how much more people see see here Let's see is that lizard you showed uh soft or solid plastic uh, uh no he's he's solid He's uh, instead of being the hard plastic like a uh, battle cat, he is the hard rubber, very similar to the powers of the force Rancor monster. You know, it has a, you know, it's really stiff, almost like tire rubber. That's what this is. And, and that's why I think really why this, these type of toys stayed in much better conditions. But, and he, yeah, he saw it all. I don't think he's hollow at all. I mean, he's, he's got some weight to him. And I think making them like this versus like the Battle Cat and Panther, sometimes you, they, they start to split. They start crack. Uh, I even got one with a broken foot off of it. But these things right here, you could toss him across the dang yard and he'd be just fine. He, he, he might get a nick on him, but he ain't going to break. And I think this is overall sculpt wise and the materials they use just a 10 to 5 or a 10 to 6 better than Battle Cat and Panther thought about being. Versus, you can hear that guy. You can hear it's hollow and fragile. If I drop this on my hardwood floor in my art room, something would break. As old as this is, and it, yeah, it just would not survive. But I would have to say the sculpt design of this Rancor monster by far is one of the coolest things that came out of the Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, all the movies. I think this creature, being the size that it is, and the accurate detailing that they used really represents what we've seen in the movie. And, and I think it was just amazing. And I don't know if, yeah, but the jaw part still works. Just very cool. And it was pretty accurate to the size of the three and three quarter inch figure. So they've done an excellent job. They didn't hold back on this one. They, they went for the coup de gras, and I think they hit a home run with this figure. See, I seen somebody say something here. 
let's see here. Never had the rank ords and see and still don't uh like i said guys now may be the good time if you have like passed in the last few years trying to get vintage star war figures because the rise in prices i think throughout the year you're going to start seeing a drop so keep your eyes out uh kind of stay away from antique stores antique stores uh seem to be a touch high because it's vintage everybody wants to use that vintage label as an excuse to raise the prices on something this one right here, I don't know if, I'm trying to see if, if the camera can pick this up. See, right there is the true color of the brown right here. But if you look over here, see, mine was a little bit faded. I picked mine up in Kentucky at uh, Wonderfest. A uh, big, huge sculpting and uh, monster making. All right, straighten up camera. Uh, and a guy was selling a whole bunch of beat up Star Wars stuff. I mean, broken ship parts. And everything like that. Well, anyway, he had this in a box, and I got him for ten dollars. So, so guys, and that was just uh, two years ago, almost two years ago. So, so guys, they're out there. There's great deals. You just be patient and look for them. And the best thing I can tell you guys, when you buy vintage Star Wars, uh, He Man, and stuff like that, don't buy just one figure. You are always better off to buy two or three things and do a bundle deal. Straighten up, camera. Getting on my nerves. So, all, never buy just one thing. And that's one thing I, I really like when you go to like a flea market or a toy show. You can negotiate with the owner. Versus eBay, you might throw in a suggestion or two or whatever, but more likely they won't even answer you at all. So... All right, guys, we're on to the, the big thing here. I wish this stupid camera would focus. Stupid thing. Come on. Straight up. There, there you go. Wake up. All right. Here's one of my uh, grails that I picked up this year. Uh, down in Atlanta called Five Points. And this is the uh, Pegasus from Clash of the Titans. I said I had one of these as a kid, and I think it ended up just getting broken and got tossed in the garbage. And uh, this is one of my most favorite coveted top 10 toys. And like I said, I've had a lot of uh, top 10 so far this year. And I might even put like my phone's just right over here. I might even pull it up and share you guys. You guys ask me if you, if you would like for me on this episode right now to share my top 10 holy grails that I'm looking for. So I know some people like that kind of stuff. Some people don't. But this is just a great sculpt. Uh, just reeks fantasy. You just don't see uh good quality horses like this anymore i'm i would love to be able to be in charge of a huge fantasy line and really bring back a lot of these kind of cool stuff right here just such they really invoke creation and imagination and you just don't see that much nowadays let's see let's see here oh you guys would like to hear the top 10 let's see what's this how much does the monster go Four, and I love it. The monster. Which which monster? Uh, clarify that for me, Mike. Me, if you don't mind, which monster? Uh, are you talking about this? Uh, typically, if this is the one you're talking about, typically you can come across these for anywhere between <clears throat> fifteen to thirty bucks. I said I think I paid ten for mine, and I was looking at getting rid of it for twenty. But on average, you're going to be pushing the thirty dollar mark if they know what they got. So. The one on the couch. Oh, the one on the couch. Okay. <laughs> We're, all right, here we go, guys. Uh, I'm, real quick, before we get to this one, the, the big coup de gras here. Real quick, I'm going to share with you guys my top 10. I got my phone right here. That way I can kind of share with you guys. Uh, like I said, I know I keep talking about I've had a banner year this year, and there, there's a re reason why here. This has just been crazy for me. And that's one thing about uh, when you get into do toy collecting and stuff like that, you uh, you hit these hot spots and you, you hit these low spots. And there for a while, I was in a low spot. Uh, but my top 10, uh, starting from 10 up, I won't spend a lot of time here. Uh, number 10 is a Mego Batman. I have just have been having issues finding a Mego Batman. I found a Mego Robin not long ago and love it. And uh, 
and I got me some Planet of the Apes coming. So I'm just waiting on them to show up. So then the Planet of the Apes Mego figures actually was ranked number 11. So I got I got a number 11. So I'm even close to the top 10. Uh, number nine is the six million dollar man and the I put these two together is a six million dollar the Bigfoot character, the one that's off the same mold that they created Chewbacca with. Uh, number eight was the Pegasus. Chi Chang got that one. Uh, number seven is the Jawa Sandcrawler. That's that, that right there is running around 500 plus. It's extremely stupid. Uh, number six is the 18 inch tall Godzilla, the one with the you push the button and the tongue comes out and the hand shoots out. I had one of those as a kid and I don't know what in the hell happened to it. I no clue. And but anyway, it's gone and I've been dying to have one ever since. Uh, this is one that I, a toy that I bought for my son. I don't even know if he even still has it or not, but it's the Black Pearl uh, ship and play set. Love that thing. I actually had an opportunity to get it. It was up in Louisville, Kentucky, and I told him I'd go ahead and prepay it, but I couldn't pick it up till the following month, and they didn't want to wait. They they wanted the money, and they wanted to get rid of it. They said they didn't have room for it. So, so anyway, later that night, they told me they sold it, but it's just $50, and it was complete. So. Uh, very annoying. So missed out on that. Uh, the Well of Souls, uh, Ramil, Ram, Ramil, uh, he's told me he's, he's a, got whole and complete Indiana Jones collection. Oh, I'd love to have that. So that was a set. Like I said, it's very small, but it's one I had as a kid and it just, so many pieces of it, it just got lost and tossed. So uh, the number three is the Fortress of Fangs. And the reason why it, I got it just above the Well of Soul, it is, it is cool, it is massive, and it is just full of imaginativity. I mean, that whoever designed this playset just went for it, man. And I think it, it's just amazing. And man, I would just make a special home for it if I could just get my hands on that one. And uh, number two, like I said, I filled my top two spots. Number two, Holy Grail, was the Death Star. Because I had it as a kid, played so hard with it until I just finally wore it out and my mom tossed it one day. And then the number one Holy Grail, the only reason it went number one over the, the Death Star was because I never had it as a kid. I wanted it, I begged for it, asked for it for Christmas, and never got it. So it was just, you know, now they say you can't ever miss something you never had. That's bull crap. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that's total bull crap. Because A, Ray Harryhausen was one of my, kind of. he's kind of like Ralph McQuarrie. He's just one of them visual artists that just really can pull out of their imagination of their brain and create some of the most amazing things. And for these guys to work on films, to take their imaginativity and their creativity and create these characters is just amazing. I would love the, the opportunity to do that for a film one day. So here's some people throwing some stuff. I love to find the Palatoy Death Star. Me too. That would be a, a nice one. Now, it's not on my list because I just figured I'd never get it. Uh, see here. Shogun Warriors Godzilla. Yes, that's the one I was talking about. Let's see. Uh, what's that toy called? I want to buy one. This is called the Kraken. 1981 Clash of the Titans Kraken. And I'm going to get you guys a better look here. This is what we're going to end the show with. And he, he's a beauty. He's massive. And guys, this is, that's what kills me is this is one of the, the coolest toys of the 80s that just didn't get a chance because they went a little cheap on the movie. But I'm telling you right here, just to kind of give you a comparison, guys, here, let's get a little bit better comparison here. Oh, come on now, camera. I apologize. You know how these camera guys, they just, they got the damn mind of their own sometimes. Come on, straighten up. Oh, dear gosh. Oh, hold on, guys. These damn cameras, I don't know what their deal is. Thank you. But to kind of let you guys see the comparison here of the size difference. There we go. Now it's time to get a brain. Look how much the Kraken truly towers over the Rancor. And like I said, we thought this was the bad, the baddest monster ever made because of the Star Wars. But look at this guy. Towers over it. Extra limbs. And check out the tail on this thing. 
great design and this tail really helps this creature stay amazingly stable on the tables and stuff like that so my bottom line guys uh my thought is this right here was truly the number one beast of the 80s uh I, I, and I, well i'm never going to change my mind on that i mean this toy from a mechanical standpoint on how they design all the different limbs and stuff just the architecture of it, the creation of it from Ray Harryhausen, just the true, and like said, even the tail guys, it comes right off, but it goes right here on this little swivel joint here. It just like sets right in there. There, there we go. And like I said, it's able to pivot and stuff like that. Just an amazing, great design. And there actually is, I'm trying to see here, there's actually a different screw holes back here where you can really take this thing apart which i'm never going to do i'm not i said i'm going to give it a good cleaning one day but this right here bottom line guys is the greatest toy of the 80s and unfortunately very few kids ever got to touch it or even got to care about it so and i never and the sad thing is in the 80s i never once ever seen this on a toy shelf i don't ever recall not where i, I lived right there uh, the Right there where Tennessee and Kentucky, Virginia all come together, a little town called Harrogate. And we always had to go over the, the mountain to Middlesboro, uh, the home of, uh, uh, see what's, uh, oh God, this went totally blank. Uh, Lee Majors, there you go. Wake up, Kevin. Uh, that's where Lee Majors grew up. And he actually, the they named the football field over here called Lee Majors Field. Uh, that's why I'm such a Lee, huge Lee Majors and fall guy and uh the six million dollar man fan is because like i said that been a, been around it all my whole life and like i said then even in that town i don't recall and i remember going to toys r us every once in a while in knoxville never once ever seen this on the shelf that i can recollect so if i did it was just something that i glanced and uh and just went on but i do not recall uh as vivid of a memory that i have trying to get one of these i, I would recall if i ever saw one back in those days and i don't and i just don't recall it but I want to show you guys one more comparison before I leave here today. And, and this is something that I was very shocked. This toy came out, I think, a couple years ago, maybe three years ago. I won't say just two. So if I'm wrong on the date, don't sue me. But is this guy, oh, God, if I can pick him up. Ba boom. This was the first King Kong toy that come out uh, in a while, a couple years ago over the new movie and everything. And I just want to show you guys the size comparison. Look how much bigger he is versus the Kraken and everything. And if I, trust me, if I would have seen this on the toy shelf as a kid, dang, I'd been all over this thing. And here is the, I hate to give this episode a sat. Is anybody saying anything? Uh, oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, I apologize. This baby is retailing right now between $600 and $700. And I think it came out back in the 80s, at, I think the either $31 or $34. He was the same price as Castle Grayskull, roughly. The Castle Grayskull, the Kraken, and the Millennium Falcon was all in that between the $30 and $35 marker back in the 80s. But what killed me is, like I said, little over $30 in the 80s. Go to your computer and do inflation calculator. This bad boy came out at $20, I believe. Either $20 or $29. Still, either way, it's cheaper. So, and here's the thing, guys. These guys, I got mine for $10. Because no kid out there wanted one of these. What in the hell, kids? How in the world do you not want a 18 inch, 20 inch tall freaking gorilla. This is totally amazing. Even though his legs don't move, look at this face. And I know this thing was probably designed digitally. And if, if I, I would love to have another one of these and sculpt the fur, fur, extra fur on top of it or put real fur on it, that would be kind of cool. But I, and that's the sad part I hate to talk about is the kids, this, these digital kids nowadays. Boom, just don't get this. And, and man, this is one heck of a cool toy. And I tell you what, I tell you what I would love to have with this thing, guys. I would have, I'd love to have the four inch scale 
Thundar the Barbarian action figures. I don't know. If you are a Thundar fan, you'll know exactly where I'm going. It's for the episode where they was in old Hollywood and they had they found the old mechanical King Kong toy where these ape like creatures was worshiping it like a god and they put it back together. That's what this thing makes me think of. And boy, I would love to display this. And the one day I guess I'm gonna have to make some custom four inch scale Thundar figures and put at it, have some of the monkey things. And man, I just think that'd be one heck of a way to display this figure. And they really need to do it and bring this toy back. But unfortunately, uh, and the guys, the value of this, even at twenty dollars, was a is a is a steal. Because you do the inflation character calculator and look at the size difference once again. Twenty some dollars today versus thirty dollars back in those days. This thing would be going for roughly probably 85, 90 bucks. I can do it and find out later. And this thing's only coming out a third or a fourth of that. So, guys, amazing toy, amazing price, and the kids today just don't get it. And that is sad. And it's very, very disturbing. And I wish, as the toy smuggler, that one day I will be working with a company or several companies to where I can get involved and try to revamp and restructure the whole entire action figure industry and really wake up these new kids to the joys of owning action figures and how they can just really pull out some great imagination and designs and just really just invoke play, evoke the imagination of creative play. And that's what these things were about. When I'm sitting right, get down to sit ready to draw and create or working on star, man, these are the things I look at. I got, I looked for these things. They gave me inspiration to really get at that drawing board and create something amazing for you guys. And Unfortunately, the digital medium just don't invoke that, unfortunately. But boy, when you put one of these babies in your hand, you know you got something. So let's see here. Oh, thank you, Matt, Mikey. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Lords of Light. I do not know. Oh, that's the name of the episode. Awesome. Okay. I get that now. Yeah, Thundar. Gosh. Uh, I would love to somehow, like I said, design some Thundar. And I may try to figure out how to design some Thundar Amigo style. These 8-inch scale. The, see, I think I got one handy here. Yeah, the, the sorry guys, I haven't reached behind me here. But the the 8-inch style, Amigo style. It's like Here's my Starman prototype. I love to do some Thundar like this. That would be truly amazing. I can do the Thundar. I'm pretty sure I can figure out the, the Ariel, I think was her name. But, uh, but you know, I think I can do the Oogla using the, I'm going to go, the, I'll get back with you guys. I may have something in my crazy brain. I think I might be able to pull that off. So, guys, here we are. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed us today on the Beast of the 80s. And I hope you guys come back and join me at 2 o'clock this afternoon and meet the family. That should be interesting. Like I said, it's my 100th episode, guys. Please don't miss it. Be a part of it. And like I said, guys. Uh, 100 is just the beginning. I'm just getting warmed up. Like I said, these live streams, this is the format that I love. I'm comfortable in it. And like I said, I got a lot of great things coming in the future. I'm talking to a couple of huge major companies. I'm talking about worldwide known companies. So I got a lot of big things in the works. So please keep up with the toy smuggler. Uh, toy smuggler. Toy smuggler. My tongue tied this morning. I need some more coffee. Need some more coffee. And uh, guys, a lot of great things coming. I want to definitely share with you guys as soon as they happen. That way you guys get the front row seat at how the things can, are growing with me and the things that I'm doing and stuff. I want you guys to be a part of it because you guys are here to support me on the here and now. So when things are happening, I want to keep you guys included in every step of the way. And let's just see how far we can take this journey, see where it goes, see where it takes me. And let's just bottom line, let's uh, enjoy toys in every aspect. And just have fun and share it with others. Guys, I'm the Toy Smuggler. Thank you guys so much. Catch you all later today. Dun, 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 dun.